Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It's lovely to welcome you all here to church this Christmas Eve. I apologize for my appearance. I had, I was completely sober, I had a trip in the vicarage on the level, 
and I just hit the carpet, but I was wearing spectacles at the time, and I had 11, uh, no, nine stitches in. So it's gradually sinking. We celebrate, of course, today the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent to be our Lord and Saviour. And we hear a prophecy from Isaiah of the salvation that is to come to Jerusalem, standing for God's people. We hear from a letter that we think St. Paul, that might have been somebody else, wrote to Titus, who was appointed bishop in a local church, talking about the goodness and loving kindness of God appearing and about Jesus being our saviour. And then we hear part of the story about the shepherds who came to be one of the first people to know that Jesus had been born as the King and the Lord and the saviour. Today's opening sentence. Let us all rejoice in the Lord, for our Saviour is born to the world. True peace has descended from heaven. And we can follow the Mass on the yellow folded sheets in plastic. And the Gospel reading and two of the prayers are in the bulletin for tonight. But we begin by saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse our thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us call to mind all that is wrong in the world, all that is wrong in our lives. And let us trust in the Saviour whom God sent. Let us pray for forgiveness of our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Africa. And so we light the four Advent candles and the fifth white one in the middle to celebrate the coming into this world of its light. Let us pray. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels all day and all night. They should never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have laboured. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has, pro has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see, your salvation comes, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. First, let me offer everyone greetings of this joyful season. And also make the practical notice 
I know there may be people who don't all that often come to this church here tonight. You are welcome to receive communion if you wish, but if it is not your custom, then if you just sort of keep your hands like that or carry a leaflet or keep your mouth closed, I will know what to do or what not to do. That's the point where we share the consecrated bread and wine. Well, tomorrow is Christmas Day. It's almost today, no, about five minutes to go. How are you going to keep it? I'm glad you've come to church, and of course you can come again if you wish. We have a service at 10 o'clock in the morning. St. Paul's, our sister church, have one at half past nine, that's near the town hall, and the various other churches, both Church of England and others. Christmas Day. Yes, there are the traditions of exchanging presents, having special food and drink, and watching a speech on television by a king for the first time this year. Previous king's speeches were on the radio, or wireless, as it was then called. But our recently departed, greatly loved queen, was the first monarch to appear on screens in homes. Other programs are standard fare for Christmas Day. One that springs to mind is EastEnders, though I've never watched it myself. Warning, a spoiler is coming up. I thought I'd better check that it's being shown this year. Sure enough, it is. The BBC One schedule says that secrets and lies are finally exposed and all hell breaks loose in the Vic. Actually, that's not much of a spoiler. Although I don't watch EastEnders, I know enough about it to be confident that the Christmas edition will have this sort of content. The BBC's description got me thinking. Secrets and lies are finally exposed and all hell breaks loose. Those two phrases rang bells. Listen to the words of the adult Jesus. From the 10th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, Nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. So that's the secrets and lies being finally exposed. And then, in the account of Jesus' arrest in St. Luke's Gospel, Jesus says, this is your hour and the power of darkness, all hell being let loose. Now, I don't think that the script writers of EastEnders had a religious dimension or meaning in mind. They glamorize real life scenes, showing scenes that we can shake our heads at while submitting that there's something compelling about them. But it's interesting that these real life happenings lie close to gospel themes. And in this way, we actually come to the heart of the Christmas message, that God entered completely the human world where truth and lies compete and good has to contend with evil. It is easy to make Christmas a feel-good festival. Many of us have a holiday from work. I don't. We see family and friends. I hope that makes us feel good. We enjoy the trappings of seasonal food and the yearly glass of Baileys. We observe midwinter festival customs, pre-Christian, like kissing under the mistletoe. Hasn't happened to me this year. We make the nativity story fit this picture. We think of a warm stable with clean straw, angels promising peace on earth, joyful shepherds, generous magi, and so on. 
Certainly, we should celebrate the love of God and rejoice in what we do as well as in what we say. But the love of God shown in the incarnation, the becoming flesh of the Son of God, was far more costly than our picture of cosy contentment. It's partly the actual circumstances of the birth of Jesus. St. Luke describes the full-term pregnant Mary and Joseph having to make the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem and how a manger was the place where her child was laid because no other accommodation, nowhere else to rest him was available. Darkness and uncertainty are present just as much as light and glory. And it's also what lay ahead in the life and ministry of Jesus, as I suggested earlier. Some followed him whilst others rejected him. The nativity accounts are in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. St. Luke tells us about the shepherds and St. Matthew about the Magi. In different ways, they assure us of God's love for the world he created and the people who live in it, whether poor like the shepherds, rich like the Magi, or whatever, whatever race they came from. We give thanks for this assurance of God's love, which is the real reason why we should feel good. But the accounts also challenge us to respond to his love by following his son, letting him be born in our hearts and grow in our hearts. A particular example of this is remembering and acting for those whose Christmas is lived in fear and poverty. Jesus himself said, if you give a cup of cold water to a stranger, you're giving it to me. But it goes much wider, because the Son of God entered and embraced the whole of humanity, from the cast of a nativity play to the cast of EastEnders. Amen. We stand to make our declaration of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the church and the world and for all people according to their needs. We pray to the Father of our incarnate Lord, who has brought us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Your Son was born for the whole human family and gave his life for us. Help us to know you, to worship and serve you. Heal the divisions between races and religions. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Wonderful Counselor, you order all things with your wisdom. Help the church to reveal the mystery of your love and fill her with the spirit of truth. We pray today for the Anglican Church of Melanesia. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide King Charles and the leaders of the nations to bring in your kingdom of justice and righteousness. We pray for peace in the Holy Land and in Ukraine, and for people who live in hunger and fear, and for all who serve in the armed forces. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Everlasting Father, you call us to live together in unity. Protect by your mercy all your children. Bless our families and renew our communities. We pray for this parish of Horninglow, a Tutbury Deanery, Litchfield Diocese, and Michael our Bishop, leading Christmas worship at Swinfold Hall Prison. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Your Son is the Prince of Peace, who brings reconciliation through the cross. By your healing power, give wholeness and peace to all who suffer. Especially we pray for Joan Palmer, Russell, Jean Hodgkins, Jim Deakin, Ellie Parton, Betty Bourne, John, Ian, Peter, Andrew, Karen and Paul Johnson, Norma, Peter Booth, Oliver and his family, Pam, Rita, Seth Taylor, Peggy King, Barry, Gordon Smith, Rob Simnett, Amy Wright, Maureen Smithard, Janet Painter, Pat, Betty Hall, Gillian Johnson, Stephen Taylor, and any others known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. May the departed be born into the fullness of life. We remember Colin Parker, Jennifer Crawforth, Christopher Thomas, and Marion Simmons, who have died recently. Our own loved ones who have departed this life, and those whose anniversaries occur at this time, amongst them, Jim Merrick, Timothy Hill, Vera Odom, Glenis Burton, John Noble, David Blant, Trevor Palmer, Alfred May, Philip Lonergan, Bill Barge, and Graham Parker. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and, and rise, rise in, in glory. glory. Amen. Joining our prayers with those of Mary, Joseph, St. John the Divine, and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we stand and share, perhaps just by smiling and waving or shaking hands with people in our bubbles, we share the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation. By our communion with God made man, may we become more like him who joins our lives to yours. For he is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ who for love of our fallen race humbled himself, was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for the coming of your kingdom, with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy to receive you, but only, only say the word and I shall be healed.
became human, we have seen his glory. Let us pray. God our Father, in this night you have made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star rises in our hearts. To him be glory both now and forever. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Not many notices this evening. Just to repeat my Best wishes for a happy Christmas and hope you have a very good time tomorrow and the rest of this season and a good new year. On Saturday, that's a week today, there is a coffee morning in Red Line House, which is just on the corner, just down the path from this church's front door, accessible also from Horninglow Road North. So do come along, 10.30 o'clock, 10.30 a.m. till 12 noon. And uh, there are details on the notice sheet which you have been given. And I think that's almost all to say, apart from many thanks to the large number of people who have helped in so many ways with our Christmas services and have cleaned the church, decorated it, run children's crib services and that sort of thing. Many thanks indeed. And our closing hymn is number 29. 